So today we've got a 2016 Hyundai i20 with 80,000 miles on the clock. As part of this service today, we're going to be changing the oil and filter. So always a good idea just to pull the dipstick up a little bit. And you can also take the oil filler cap off just so it, uh, it drains out a bit smoother, lets the air back into the engine as the oil comes out. So underneath this car, it has a plastic belly pan and you can see the sump plug and the oil filter, but unfortunately, neither of them line up with the hole, the access hole in the panel. So we're gonna remove this uh, panel. It's just held on with um, 10 millimeter self-tapping bolts and a few plastic screws and clips. I'll crack on and uh, get that removed. So you find as the cars get older, the trays have been on and off a few times. Sometimes you find a selection of different fittings that people have replaced with bits that have broken and gone missing. Generally, all these 10 millimeter bolts came out okay. These plastic clips, however, you're supposed to clearly just unscrew the middle bit until it's almost out and then pull it and the whole thing comes out. But you can see some of these are a bit bent and splayed and they don't quite grip how they should do so you try and turn the screw and the whole thing turns which is why i was there with a screwdriver just underneath the head and gently prise that up you can normally get hold of it with your fingers and just pull it then but yeah just to be aware really sometimes they can be a bit fiddly they look quite simple but they can be a bit of a pain right now that under trays removed, you can clearly see one spin on oil filter there and uh, some plug here. That's a 17 mil, so I'm gonna use a 17 mil single hex socket. You've got a lot better purchase and uh, less chance of slipping and rounding it. Engine's cold on this, so the oil shouldn't come shooting out like it would do when it's hot but just have the drain tray ready and uh that's going to take a little while to drain down being cold but uh we'll leave that for a few moments and uh crack the oil filter off next so the oil filters are generally done up just hand tight, but they can stick. I um, normally use these grips, just a big pair of slide grips. It's quite accessible as you can see, and you can just get on there and crack it loose. But yeah, this one, I can actually undo by hand, so that's a result. Yeah, just be warned that will dribble out a bit more oil. Some people actually whack a hole in the bottom to let them drain out, though I never, I don't generally do that. I just like to crack it loose and leave it to uh, dribble out for a little while. So I'll let that do its thing and take it off in a moment. So that's been dripping a while now. Um, I'm probably still gonna get smothered, but I shall spin that off. And rest it down here. And leave that to drain for a little while. And next we'll uh, get the new oil filter on. So we've got the new replacement oil filter here. 
and it's always a good idea to put a, a little bit of grease or engine oil, anything on there really on the seal, it actually says on the filter itself so I'll just use a little drop of the old oil, that won't hurt. That's fine. And before you refit it, make sure the rubber o-ring seal out of the old filter has actually come off of this housing. Sometimes they stick and they get left behind and when you screw the new oil filter on it won't seal properly and you'll fill it up with oil and start it up and the thing will leak everywhere. But that's, um, that's fine, that's all good. So yeah, you've only got to do it up hand tight. You don't need any tools to nip that up. That's it. Okay, so next we'll get the sump plug back in. So on the sump plug, you'll find, well, this one's got an aluminium washer. It looks absolutely fine. It hasn't been crushed or split or anything like that. Some of them have a rubber O-ring, rubber seal of some sort. It's always worth checking to make sure they're not damaged. Um, if they are, you can generally get hold of a sump plug from the same place you've uh, purchased an oil filter. So, uh, just give that a little wipe. Don't forget to nip that up. That's it. Okay, so before I put the under tray on, I'm gonna drop it down and uh, refill the engine with oil. Right, so now engine oil in. Just make sure your dipstick is up a little bit at this point because it can uh, glug back up through the uh, filler there and make a bit of a mess. Some of these are quite slow fillers, so you just gotta go easy, really. And when I picked up the oil from um, the motor factors that I use, they can tell you which grade to get because there are quite a few different grades and they do vary from one engine to the other. So make sure you get the right grade. They also recommended 3.5 litres for this engine, but I'm gonna put in just over three, probably 3.1, 3.2, and then uh, run it up and uh, leave it to stand for a little while and dip it. It's a lot easier just to keep topping up in dribs and drabs than having to get back underneath and uh, drop a bit out if there's too much. Too much oil can cause just as much damage as not enough. So you don't really want to go mad with it. Right, okay. That's just over three litres. So put the cap back on. Put the dipstick in. Start it up and let it tick over for a little while and uh, make sure your oil pressure light goes out. You don't have to go mad and rev them up, especially as uh, it's been emptied of oil. It can take a a little while for it to draw up the new oil. Well, that sounds fine. The oil light went out pretty quickly, actually. 
So we'll just leave that to uh, stand. Now it's had a chance for the oil to circulate around the filter and through the galleries. We'll let it stand for maybe three, four minutes and then uh, check on the dipstick and see where it's at. So this has stood for several minutes now, three or four minutes. Hopefully it's going to be a little bit low. Yeah, you can see there, that's the maximum dot there and we're just down there. There's the minimum dot. So I'm just going to keep putting very small amounts in until we get to just below the maximum. I think that'll do. Again, leave that for a few minutes and uh, check it again shortly. So as you can see now, not only is it dripping, but that is just under the maximum dot. That's perfect, that's just where you need to be. So we'll refit that. Put the cap back on. Take it back up in the air and uh, refit the under tray. The reason I didn't refit the under tray while it was up was just in case I did put too much oil in. You don't want to be taking that off again. It's a bit of a bit of a job in itself. So under tray's all back on now, all secure. Uh, I'm just gonna drop it down and um, make sure the bonnet's closed properly, oil caps on, dipsticks back in, and uh, give it a run around the road. Then bring it back and uh, have a quick look and make sure there's no leaks. At the moment, it all looks good. Um, and that's about it, really. Hopefully that'll help somebody out. Thanks for watching. If you find our videos helpful, please uh, hit like and subscribe to help us out. Nice one.